Tonight on Local Light with John Compton, watercolor artist Mary Rollins takes John through her painting process while sharing her love for the inspiring natural world. Mary's studio and home are in the Dalles, where she paints striking, vivid pieces that can be viewed at several galleries in the Northwest. That's all next on Local Light. Mary, it's really nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, John. Well, I thank you so much for coming in. And oh, it's a pleasure to be here. Well, good. I want to hear, um, you know, your your story. I want to hear yeah. about how you got into the, this. The artist's story. The artist's yeah. story. And yeah. they're always so different. And well, yeah. yeah, we're all, we're all from all different branches. It's quite interesting. Yeah, Minnesota is where you were raised, right? That's right. Quite yeah. different than yeah. the Columbia Gorge. Yeah, yeah. But I've been here for 37 years though, so. So it's becoming a distant Oregon, memory. Oregon, I have deep roots here, but I did grow up on a farm in Minnesota. And that, ah, a lot of the, the artistic point of view, that started there. I've always been very close to the land. That's just part of who I am. I, uh, and to the water element, which was a part of my, uh, our farm acreage. We had a stream running through the uh, land and I spent a lot of time down there. I kind of, I guess I was a bit of a tomboy, you might say. Yeah. And I just, the dragonflies, the leopard frogs, that, that, Real magnet. Yeah. yeah. Were mm -hmm. you sketching them and stuff at that time or no, just observing? Just, yeah, observing just the uh, intricate design that you find in nature. Uh, part of it might have been being a farm kid. I wasn't around children as much, had siblings to pay, play with, and we, I was a 4-H kid, and we, uh, of course, you're around uh, youngsters a lot in school, but had, uh, besides working on the farm, you had plenty of free time, and so I just uh, enjoyed observing nature around me, and yeah. uh, uh, even going down the creek with a mason jar and pulling out some water and looking at all that myriad of uh, water bugs and tadpole eggs. And yeah. that was kind of, I guess that's uh, where the love of nature started. So being on a farm with just uh, kind of remote with just your brothers mm -hmm. and sisters mm -hmm. and you know, you're seeing schoolmates and stuff from time to time, right. but had to entertain yourself a lot. Yeah. 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 And, yeah. and nature definitely was, yes. was one of the ways oh, you were doing the, that. Yeah. The intricate uh, design that you see in nature, the strong colors that just, uh, that, I guess that's the genesis of it. Yeah. Yeah. Now, when did you start to go, I'm thinking, let's, let me start doing something with that. Did you go to school? To become an artist, or did you go to school for something else? I, yes, I was. Uh, I got a fine arts degree through Southern Oregon University. Uh, but when you think, when I go back and think about a turning point, I was in second grade, and just to illustrate the impact that teachers have on our lives, we had in Minnesota we had art teachers that would rotate through the elementary schools. And there was a time, uh, Mrs. Scott was her name. I had done a drawing of a cat and she made such a big deal about this drawing. She had me go up the front of the class and she was pointing out to the other children, look how Mary has drawn the haunch of the animal, da da da. Well, that was kind of a wow moment for me. And I thought, I, I really enjoyed doing that rendering of the cat, and I, I just wanted to do more, so. So is it safe to say then that that teacher was kind of the one that spawned this career Truly, yes, and uh, she's not with us anymore, but the, as late as, uh, oh, seven or eight years ago, go back to Minnesota, see her, and she was so tickled at what I was doing with my life. I was, I guess, one of her little success stories. So she so. got to experience oh, that yeah. sea yeah. work. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's cool. True. Mm -hmm. So how about the, the nature aspect of, of your artwork? You mm -hmm. have a lot of nature in your artwork, and I know, you I know, do. there's been, you know, some kids on the beach, and, you know, you, you, yes. you do some people and stuff, too. But right. It seems like, from what I've seen, the core is always nature. Well, we live in uh, one of the best areas in the world. Our, the scenery here, the wildlife, uh, the hiking areas, 
I have no end to subject material. Yeah. So I draw a lot from the gorge. And, do, you, uh, do you get out and experience it firsthand? Because I know you paint in your studio. Yes, yes, and I do. I, at one time I had tried painting watercolor outdoors, but the gorge winds can be challenging and I often paint quite large. So I am pretty much a studio artist right now, use my own photo reference material and, uh, but our hiking, my, my husband and I, we uh, will go strike out and the hike alone is a good reason just to get out, that alone. But we bring our cameras and uh, we're always looking for something. Dale Rollins, my husband, he grew up in a logging family in Southern Oregon. And so his early, early life, he was involved in the woods quite a bit. And he is like an amateur naturalist. Oh, really? And so he has taught me a lot about observation. And now we're both, I'm, I'm getting more up to speed with him. It's like having two sets of ears, two eyes, or, or two pairs, excuse yeah. me. And uh, we rarely come back from a hike without something. They don't all end up as paintings, but uh, it's So he great. kind of works alongside you very in helping much. create these, these paintings. He is. He's a, a great husband, but very much a business partner in our art yeah. business, yeah. Well, and we'll talk more about, you know, the business aspect mm -hmm. and that sure. being an artist and having to run a business um, and actually, you know, be successful at it can be very, yeah. very challenging. Well, and yes. I've talked to a lot of artists and it's like, that's the one part I have just this endless well of ideas mm. and inspirations. But then when it comes to the business side, that's where I really fall short. Yeah. So I wanna hear more about that uh, and we'll, yeah. we'll talk about that. But mm -hmm. before we take a break here, tell me about, do you remember that time, the very first painting that you sold and you actually were paid for your work? I do. I don't, I think every artist remembers that a moment. You're, you're just amazed that somebody will pay you for your, your renderings. I was living in Southern Oregon at that time. I had done a watercolor of, actually it was a ranch scene the cattle in the hillside. And a rancher from Southern Oregon bought this small piece, I think for $100, and I was so blown away. I was just, Couldn't yeah. believe you could get $100 oh for it. Yeah, yeah, that was, hmm, how many years ago? 25 years ago, I really? think, so yeah, yeah. Wow, yeah. well neat. Well, more with Mary Rollins when we return. We'll uh, discuss all kinds of things, mm -hmm. so stick with us, be right back. Later. I use a glazing process. And what a glaze is, is basically a wash where you paint in areas and you let it dry. Uh -huh. And then I may have five, six, seven layers of paint all over the paint, painting before it's done. 